Well, hello. Welcome to episode three of the Embodied Sounds web series. My name is Joshua Miller, and I'm a musician, sound healer, and facilitator, looking specifically at how the intersection of sound and human wellness and environmental conservation all link together. And today I'm very excited to welcome my first sound healing teacher, a true champion of the movement based in uh, Lisbon, Portugal. And his name is Bruno Teixeira. Uh, about three years ago, I had the pleasure of meeting Bruno at one of his concerts in the south of Portugal, and we instantly became friends. We started a project together called Nada Sangha, which translates to community through sound. And I'd like to start off with a quick video of our work together. Uh, this is from a visit we took to some of the beautiful caves in northern Portugal in the summer of 2018. So I hope you enjoy it. Great. I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, without any further ado, I'd like to welcome Bruno on to today's broadcast. Hello, my brother Bruno. How's it going today? Hello. Hello, dear Josh. So happy to be here with you. First of all, thank you for this invitation and for this opportunity to share with the rest of the world. Um, some little taste of our uh, uncountable uh, gem session moments of infinite good talking and also good music. Brings back some good memories, yeah? And, and the present, we still are friends and brothers, we still are keeping the energy. So nice. Well, um... To prepare for today's conversation, I took uh, the initiative to make myself some kitchery, since I know you're a big fan of Indian cooking and Ayurvedic wellness. Um, mm. And you've taught me so much about how to take care of myself that it's, uh, it's just a pleasure to get to welcome you and, and converse from different continents while we're both uh, still in quarantine. Um, so. Would you mind just telling uh, everyone a little bit about who you are and what you do? Who I am, I'm still on the path. <laughs> what I do, uh, I do a lot of stuff. Uh, since always, my mommy are always saying, you should focus, you should focus. <laughs> But there are so many things so so tasty, like uh, the flavors of Indian food. <clears throat> then I had found that the best it's not we focus in one taste, but uh, we become uh, competent, skillful to to know how to combine them. And this could be could uh, uh, be eared like. Um, cooking conversation, but it's like a life conversation and uh, for sure it's a music conversation. 
um, then I could focus in voice, I could focus in didgeridoo, handpan, bansuri, um, I could focus in many other things. But uh, I had find that uh, a little flavor of each one bring a full dish of uh, great pleasure and great nutritional uh, capacity. So nice, so nice. Uh, I know you're uh, familiar with so many things, a multi-instrumentalist and uh, sound and wellness practitioner yoga teacher and as you say on the path always a student uh, if you wouldn't mind just talking a little bit about how you got into this practice of sound healing and what uh, what that experience has helped you feel in your life then from the beginning when I born I born with this compulsion to communication mix it with uh, a full and intense uh, curiosity about everything in a more mature uh, time I, I start to look into myself because it's not it's part of the process when we are uh, children we look uh, to the world and then when we face uh, some moment in our lives, we start to, to look also uh, to us as an inner world. And then all my search was uh, to, to try to find some answers, uh, mainly uh, made of understanding and connection. That's why uh, between a lot of doubts and wishes, what the path I should go. I like maths, I like literature, uh, I like uh, uh, all the arts. Uh, but uh, I started by anthropology, that search. And as Melanie Klein uh, writes, uh, in a very clever and wise way uh, she said if someone don't know uh, or don't, don't understand society he has the tendency in vocational mode to go for sociology or other studies that will feed that uh, emptiness or that anger uh, if someone don't understand himself and the other, uh, there are this tendency to go to psychology. Uh, as I found myself between both, as Melanie Klein also said, when we don't understand one thing or the other, or we feel a little bit uh, confused and lost between inner world and out, outside world, we have the tendency to go to something like anthropology. And that's one way of I grab this uh, and, and, and to put it some orientation, uh, to choose some path uh, of inner communication and outside communication. That, that anthropology uh, path and search uh, easily and in a quite surprising way at my 20s and I will do 43 next Friday. Yay! Yay. <laughs> um, uh, easily and surprisingly uh, get, got the, the yoga and meditation path uh, and for me was a, a big big surprise because as I uh, had said in the moment finally I find some 
uh, way of thinking with my foot. Because in university, I was getting a lot of uh, perspectives and answers, but I was feeling like a mushroom. My head was full of ideas and theories, and I, I, I got this disconnection with my body, and yoga and meditation in the beginning uh, teach me uh, how how to I think and feel as a whole, especially in a grounding way with my feet. And since that, I'm. I'm, I see myself mainly as a, a human development teacher through yoga meditation, meditation, and and to to go deeper in that understanding and that capacity as a teacher, I feel the necessity to to dive into the subtil anatomy of human being to the energetic bioenergetic physiology uh, because the formation that I had until that period don't satisfy my curiosity and don't give me safe basis and practical capacity to understand uh, the, the five elements uh, understanding of the world and how energy uh, behave be between everything and in everything. Then I had find someone very special in my life that I keep this beautiful friendship. Uh, the person that I call Master, Bal Krishna. Uh, it was a uh, quite unique encounter until nowadays and <clears throat> he became my uh, meditation teacher and because he's uh, uh, someone that had touched my, my heart uh, I went to to spend time with him in one way or another. He's a full wise person, and I decided to initiate my traditional Chinese uh, studies. Uh, and um, I got deeper, mainly motivated for the understanding of this subtle and bioenergetic uh, field of the human being, nature and the universe. And uh, more or less in the same time, uh, Ayurveda start to appear as something uh, completely associated or non-dissociated from yoga. But until that time, I don't had that idea. I don't, uh, no one had, had said me that yoga and Ayurveda were like brothers, or even in a more traditional perspective, that yoga is a branch, a part of Ayurveda. And in a very simple way, we we could say that without uh, help, mental, uh, physical help, uh, emotional help, uh, mental help, it's quite difficult or impossible to we go to uh, major uh, developments. And yoga, most of all, it's to go up in an inner way, it's, uh, it's, it's to go further in a closer way, um, it's a paradox, very beautiful and tasty, <laughs> like Indian food, <laughs> <laughs> and without uh, a, a good base of health, 
it's uh, quite difficult uh, or impossible to to build uh, something above of that. Uh, if we can talk in this language of building, mm -hmm. because in fact yoga it's more taking the clothes than putting. It's more taking the building over <laughs> and getting that naked naked state of the soul, uh, the more natural and simple than to create uh, more things and but that's the issues of language and uh, <clears throat> and because of the issues of language um, music uh, had grow in a very unexpected way uh, I find I found music uh, through uh, mouth art, it was my first connection with instruments, uh, taking over that percussion experience randomly, but that was my first instrument and that was something that catch me in my 16s, hmm. 16 years old. Uh, but uh, the mouth art, after two summers, it broke. And I got like where I can get <laughs> another <laughs> mouth out. Um, uh, I don't know. By my means, I could not find another mouth out in the death period. And in the moment uh, that I, f I found yoga, one month difference, I found I meet Didgeridoo. And uh, suddenly, because I, I, I got really uh, in a full, intense, completely diving in yoga, almost obsessive in the beginning, I forget everything. I remembered six, sometimes eight hours of sadhana. Wow. In the beginning, I was really of practice in the, in the mat. <clears throat> Uh, my first teach teacher was in a good way, a little crazy, because he was always challenging uh, the illusion of limitation. And his challenge, for example, go to uh, invite us to stand up in one leg three hours and a half, then compensate three hours and a half in the other leg. This is the kind of uh, uh, craziness, and for do that, you have to face your identity, because it's very easy, like in here, in this conversation, in a philosophical way, we say, oh, I'm not the leg. <laughs> but if you stand up three hours and a half in one leg, that, that will not be intellectual. Uh, uh, or you trust deeply and you uh, give completely yourself to that resting mode uh, and your leg burns, your thoughts burn, everything burns, you, you feel all emotions, uh, you want to quit millions of times. <laughs> But something more than you and my crazy teacher, don't give up, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya. <laughs> <laughs> and the mental yoga, the, the feeding of the new food thoughts and the, the, the believing, the bhakti yoga of that you know, <clears throat> trusting and, and that put Atta yoga in other level. And also Jnana Yoga, uh, the more logical and rational part uh, that holds half of you saying, I'm not the leg, why uh, she's trying to dominate me? But the other half of your uh, brain, it's, he said, give up, this is a crazy, <laughs> I'm not feeling okay, I'm not feeling, but then mantra, 
with with emotion and have uh, the believing, the feeling, the um, fulfilling the, all those doubts and getting that uh, beautiful and light and peaceful experience after seven hours of challenging half of you and half of you. And that was my beginning in yoga. <clears throat> and in the same time, Didgeridoo also uh, grew up in, in a similar way. Uh, I have this tendency of being intense, uh, not very focused in a continuous way, but I never give up. That's why 23 years of Didgeridoo I'm not the best, that's not my my goal, uh, but uh, I'm not the best in anything, uh, I just want to feel the best of me between everything, and I feel quite comfortable with that idea. And just to finish this introduction, because it's so difficult to talk about uh, as especially when I have a, an orchestrated uh, random schizophrenic experience with so many of me. <laughs> but they are all orchestrated. <laughs> they are all friends. And uh, I think quite well tuned between themselves. I don't know if this is a personal perspective of me. Uh, I'm quite... Um, uh, happy with myself in this moment in, in a, and I said this in a very simple way and humble way uh, but I feel quite comfortable quite confident uh, and, and music <coughs> uh, grow up more than everything because it, it was the language without words without concepts and words have a full power uh, in many ways and fields but there are some moments that if you want to go into the silence uh, with words we can do it talking by the heart uh, we, we could touch the silence poetry do that but talking like the the heart it's poetic it's pure poetry. Uh, but music grabs you in a, in, in a very transcendental way because it goes behind, behind uh, in an inner way, in an out way. Uh, out of the conceptualization of the clothes of the words. Mm. Because when I say, for example, <clears throat> Lisbon, Lisbon, it's not in my mouth. Full Lisbon in here. <laughs> the line, <laughs> the castle. <laughs> it's not here, it's like a, a flash. Uh, you know, uh, it's something that points to something. But the way the sound, as I say, Lisbon, it's quite real. Could be symbolic, but it's real. Lisbon, Lisbon, Alan, Alan. It's sound. It's it's real. It's it, it don't means nothing unless the energy that I'm putting. Uh, in this sound. Of course, if this sound of my voice uh, is uh, have this architecture of language and symbolic things, plus the emotion, my full truth in what I'm saying, uh, something magical happens in communication uh, field and but music do it that so directly. Uh, until now, I had identified 
uh, if some extraterrestrial person and we don't need to go to this kind of idea because the little that I have traveled to the world it was my smile and you know it because you are <laughs> addicted to traveling <laughs> it's true yes music and our inner peaceful state that really touch uh, people uh, for for equal we could say that these are universal language if you smile even animals will understand uh, plants will understand an extraterrestrial i think you will understand you are you are not expressing tension aggressivity uh, if you play uh, <clears throat> and you are in tune and if you play like you are talking in a friendly way because you can play as a, a fighter aggressive no we, music express a lot of things but we, we use music to express the best of our humanity something very special behind words uh, happen I think the, the the great magical it's when you sing pure your sound or I have a special uh, uh, kind of fetish with mantras uh, and I think it's not a personal just perspective because mantras having the uh, technology of the Sanskrit that we could have a webcast just about Sanskrit totally uh, and but talking about the Sanskrit uh, it's it's called one of the translations of Sanskrit it's the God language and it it was not created to to express give me an apple or I love you or get out of here Sanskrit had come in <clears throat> for the ancient rishis, yogis of the mountain, the caves, the forests, that in deeply meditation they had hear and feel the inner sounds. And by collecting them, they have built the Sanskrit alphabet. And they put it like a, a, a resonance sound expression of nature, uh, not inner or out, just nature. Because inner or out, you are putting this in a dual perspective. But if you don't see two, but you see the whole, then you will perceive uh, the manifestations of the whole and Sanskrit it's now nowadays study now that is many years ago it's one of the main disciplines for quantic physics uh, uh, for uh, complex mathematics for engineering because it will uh, uh, teach and rebuild your uh, brain, your inner capacities, uh, as the language can can do it. Uh, language, it's a it's a bridge of understanding and a way of nominating realities. If you do, don't understand nothing, uh, something, you will not call it nothing. Uh, but if you uh, perceive something, you will need, uh, appears the, the necessity of having a word or a sound to you relate with that in a communication way. And uh, as I told you, I, I'm curious about everything and nothing. And uh, Language. I love language. I have studied four years Latin, 
four years German. I don't speak German because I don't practice. <laughs> but I, I got it the I got it some intuitive notions and French, uh, Portuguese, Italian it's quite close, Spanish. And uh, I'm not talking in a, in a uh, perfect linguistic mode. I'm talking about moods, feelings, uh, the taste, the flavor. Uh, and when I reach Sanskrit, uh, I feel that it touched me as as any language have, have done until now. And I feel that Sanskrit could touch reality uh, as few language could, could do it. And this is a very ignorant perspective because I'm not a specialist, I'm just I'm just an expect uh, uh, a spectator, and but from my point of view, that's what I I feel. Then, when we talk about mantra, we are not talking about uh, some bridge <coughs> of language. It's more a bridge of understanding, because it holds so many things, and it's one of the fewest. Uh, taking into account my ignorance, uh, but for what I know, it's the unique language that means what uh, it is. I'm talking maybe Chinese, especially old Chinese, keep that uh, structure too because of the characters. Uh, the geometrical way of uh, writing the Sanskrit letters, the, the meaning of each uh, word, uh, uh, the meaning of each uh, vocal and consonant, and I'm not talking just in a symbolic way, um, it, it is what it is. Uh, it's it's a, a perfect uh, reflex of inner realities, and that's why, like a, a good mirror or a good glass, it will allow us to perceive in a more accurate way uh, what we are perceiving through that or in that and <clears throat> of course mass Sanskrit uh, it's the main uh, ad body of the uh, an adware of the software of mantra yoga and all the expressions about kirtan about bhajans about the beaches, about uh, the Nada Yoga, pure sound, sacred sound, and music had uh, reached this, 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 by all of these paths, and in my life it's an inner church, uh, search, an inner church also, <laughs> uh, where I feel praying uh, with myself and the universe through uh, ways that uh, make me sense and make me uh, feel in resonance with the best of me and everything. It's better you say something just because <laughs> Thank <laughs> I will you. keep so <laughs> Thank you, brother. Thank you so I'll, much. It's I will keep this flow. <laughs> yes, I, I know 
we could talk for hours like we uh, usually yeah. do uh, oh, and have many times in our lives together. Um, you know, <clears throat> I, I feel like to describe a little bit of my experience uh, meeting you, you know, of what that felt like, it was really the first time that I went to a uh, sound bath or a sound healing concert, uh, sound meditation experience, so many different ways to describe it. And uh, it was definitely a night of my life that completely changed the course of uh, the rest of my life. And I feel like the best way to describe it was really just being put in that very uh, vulnerable space of needing to let go of um, my mind's need to control the experience and just trust that I was going to be guided in the direction that I needed to, to go in at that time. Um, that was a very difficult thing to do. And we talk about this kind of difference between control and trust um, a lot, you and me over the years. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm curious if you want to share uh, something specifically about why it's, a, it's so important um, to trust, you know, uh, as we navigate life's uh, challenges and how maybe music has been a teacher in that. Um, is there something that you feel in your body or experience in your mind when you are getting lost into that kind of trance and meditative state that comes through playing didgeridoo, um, hand pan, you know, all of the instruments that you play and mantra in Sanskrit, like when you feel that oneness, um, how how what is that like and and you know how has that helped you uh go forward over these 43 years you say next uh oh, next man. week <laughs> today i feel like you're a 25 year old <laughs> always <laughs> but uh in a in a dual perspective we could put it like uh, uh control and rest mm. and somehow we have to pass for this uh, illusory uh, duality and it looks like a conflict or a choice should i control or should i trust and i give you the example of the car and life is like that your body is like that you have to do it both but in the right moment because if you go if you want to go further you will not hold the, the brake of the foot or the hand brake, no? It's the brake that you call, no? Yeah, the brake. You will. You want to, to move and you will put it the brake. No. You, you want to move, you put it the, the foot in accelerator and you move the, the box with the velocities, options. Uh, and also that you have to control more velocity, less velocity uh, but this word control uh, especially in occidental uh, perspective at uh, at rich covid 19 <laughs> imagine the craziness in my perspective all of us this is quite craziness don't believe it open your eyes and just see it by yourself but that's another webcast <laughs> but we are in a dangerous times my friend by excess of controlling craziness hmm. something behind this worldwide situation normally it's controlled in a manicomium but now these uh, crazy ideas had been spread all over the world and we are all in a really <laughs> worldwide manicomium <laughs> whatever <clears throat> and it's because of that we have to trust even more 
we are in times that we really need to trust mm. and, and to take the control of what your life okay but let's go to the poetical and more philosophical aspect we don't go into political issues and to yeah and, that's and a good point that, that are uh, a little bit uh, fragile uh, and maybe too soon and not of this moment <clears throat> then uh, instead of this dictomy of control and trusting I will choose one non-dual world management okay I, I try to see me as a manager of myself uh, and of the projects that I embrace and that mood puts me in a leadership uh, perspective being uh, a leader first of all of myself that's a daily life challenge uh, if I put me in a controller mode I will become into a very rigid and dictatorial mood, uh, inflexible and uh, less compassive mood, less empathic mood. If I uh, put me in just trusting, 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 trusting God, help me make my life happy, uh, I will put myself in a stupid sense uh, uh, condition. Uh, I have a big heart, but I'm getting away of the responsibility of uh, making my own part. And I will always expecting that some miracle happens or the universe uh, will feed me like a, a baby uh, in, in a spiritual uh, balance and healthy way that's child childhood just to trust uh, this way uh, the wise way it's to manage you have to trust and trust uh, in many ways but the root of trusting it's in the heart and you have to to control like when you are driving and, and talking about music, if I don't control the BPM, the rhythm, the velocity, if I don't take some control of the, the pitch and, and the tuning of the instruments, the manutention, even the instruments, the the right position uh, of the instruments for when you are going to play you had control hmm. uh, the 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 stands the hardware you have controlled the right position your your where are you standing uh, how the didgeridoo in the stand are perfect in your mouth and you know you i play with the foot the mouth and the hands and sometimes with the elbow. <laughs> I like to, I like this uh, full body uh, capacity of playing. <laughs> uh, it's a kind of yoga, a lot of coordination. Yeah. <clears throat> and, um, Let's talk about that coordination. You know, you you mentioned before those uh, different maybe voices in your mind that have an idea, but then immediately say, no, I can't do that, right? Um, we always have that check and balance system. Uh, when you're playing and you have the foot, the hand, maybe the elbow um, doing something different, do you have time to doubt yourself? Do you have time to, uh, to say, no, I, I can't do that? Or do you just have to do it and and how has has that practice you know of playing um okay. you know helped, helped you you know in, in your life okay uh 
uh, in here we reach the importance of uh, the Dinacharya through Yoga and Ayurveda, the way as you manage your days between uh, your uh, your your discipline, the way as you organize yourself, the way as you 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 put it in in a, a healthy habits uh, that will uh, quickly become unhealthy if you get stuck all of life in those. A healthy habit, it's always in mutation. Okay, I get it quite good in here. Like healthy habit of playing uh, in in patterns of two. If you get that healthy habit, okay, let challenge yourself to pattern of three. Then you you go to some uncomfortable area, and I'm talking about life habits uh, capacities. Once you get it really comfortable in three, four, five. Uh, then pass to another challenge. Then you will not stuck in the habit. Then what I am talking, it's very important, the practice, the, and in a sacred way, that it's called sadhana. Sadhana, most of people don't know where this beautiful Sanskrit word had born or uh, was uh, or originated. Uh, and sadhana, came from the military uh, in uh, ancient Indian uh, uh, areas, especially for the elbow. Okay, and <clears throat> one of the meanings, because Sanskrit is so rich, depending the level, the context uh, between heart and heaven. It's a multidimensional language. Uh, one of the meanings, it's the right way to the, to the goal. It's the right way to the goal. Um, and then, if you uh, uh, bring the sadhana, the yoga sadhana, the meditation sadhana, that mainly it's uh, bringing your best to each moment, to each day, uh, uh, thinking what is uh, what is my priority now, 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 om, 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 om. What is what is now going to be? Because my bladder is full. Okay, you go directly and you do it. It's very practical. I'm starving. Okay, you go to make your food. I need that, or uh, uh, this is good for me, but I'm creating resistance. Let's face it. Let's face it like a sadhana, in a very practical issues. I have to do this. I don't want to do this, but it's necessary. It's what I should make. It's my professional responsibility. It's my social responsibility. It's my existential responsibility. Do it like a sadhana, direct to the goal. Uh, and then, if you crea create this uh, sadhana dinacharya, this sacred practice of going direct to the goal, to a good, uh, uh, disciplined day, May, m and we have to re-educate in biorhythmical, wake up that hour to eat uh, your uh, breakfast or first you make your meditation, or whatever. Uh, that's my perspective. For many people it could be another uh, kind of organizing themselves, so uh, <clears throat> taking care of the kids or taking care of uh, uh, that, going to work, and then lunch, and pa 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 After some time, you will be, uh, that you will create a memory. And the memory 
will demand you uh, that kind of food, yoga, meditation at that hour, shower at that hour, going to run or going to catch something. And then you, you create this, this base. Music, it's like this too. We, we, we prepare the best of us to some moment, and then in the moment you can get out of, in a freely way of that habit and just flow. Mm -hmm. And that's where Bhakti Yoga enters. Be, be, and, unless you will become a controller and you will do it that so perfect that it becomes a non-living thing. Life, it's so organized and it's so chaotic. It's a beautiful poetic paradox of order and chaos. Hmm. And part of, uh, uh, we should have this Viveka, this uh, 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 perception uh, of uh, where are the areas or the aspects in my life or in me as a musician, uh, in, in my relationship with the instruments, that instruments that are weak. Then I go there and I <clears throat> empower myself in that relationship. And then I forget it. I, okay, now I feel comfortable with this. Now I can, I can just fly or flow. Um, and uh, in reality, <clears throat> what you ask me, I feel a little bit of everything. Because if in that day I don't have sleep well, and you know that I have chronic issues of spine and sometimes I have privation of uh, sleep, uh, you know that I'm between many things and many people and sometimes emotional pressure and, and things are re quite challenged to me as an empathic and sensitive person. Uh, I'm, I'm a warrior, I'm strong in my spirit, but this body are quite, quite fragile and my heart, uh, as it is sensitive, uh, also feels things in a very intense and deep way. And there are sometimes uh, that uh, life challenge me and I'm not so strong or so balanced. And in that moment, I have to go for the security mode to do it in a more automatic way. Uh, and in music, no one improvise from nothing. You improvise from a background of memories. If you have a lot of memories, you can improvise in a more freely and amazing way if you are tuned with the best of yourself and the universe. Because there are this part that we could explain many times that I'm channel channeling something more than me in a more mystical or new age language. I'm being conducted or I'm being... Uh, uh, I'm, <clears throat> it's not me, it's something more than me that is playing this instrument. If you are tired, full energy, and uh, uh, with the empty stomach and full blend, you will not have inner conditions to resonate with the universe. But if you have sleep well, uh, your stomach is happy and your blood it's f full of good food and energy uh, and your blend it's uh, empty uh, then you are ready for the now full power like a, a car with uh, full oil full gas and good manutention is ready for the best of his performance uh, and then <clears throat> sometimes when I'm in that best uh, capacity, I, I could drive in my best, I could play in my best. Sometimes 
uh, if I'm not in that best capacity. I, I have some some inner fight or tensions and doubts come, should I play that? Because, you know, I like to improvise. And there are moments that I, I, I don't know, it's not me. It's something more than me that is playing. And uh, I don't know how I know it, but I know that I have to go to that instrument and I don't know what I will do there, but something happens. And I'm like uh, the... Uh, uh, the, uh, as Jean-Paul Sartre had I, a committed spectator I'm a spectator but I'm committed with that I'm full committed with that but I don't feel that is me that is doing that and my 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 and what was my part in that? Sleeping well, eating well, making good digestion, taking care of me previously, get comfortable in the instruments and that relationship. And then in the moment, it's that trust works because I had control previously in a non-controller way, but in a disciplined way, the, the feel, the conditions, for like an, an inner agriculture, good land, water, light, conditions, how I will control the flower or the fruit. It happens. And the, the, the agriculture just smile it and it's a committed spectator. Like, wow, so beautiful. The flower, it's happening. You don't flower himself it just create the condition hmm. and this is management nice and thank you thank you i <laughs> i was just thinking while you were speaking you know right now so many people are being asked to stay at home uh for way more time than ever before and i really feel for people i've been talking about this with uh, a lot of friends um artists yogis, um, practitioners of different modalities who at some point in their life have already built themselves a practice uh, to develop that sadhana that you were describing. And I'm curious, you know, if you could, could speak to someone now who maybe doesn't have a good practice in their life, uh, What's one way to get started, you know, doing that so that we can use this time at home to not seem so crazy and always reading the news and getting bombarded with such uh, difficult, you know, updates? Um, can you share some from maybe when you were first learning yoga, first learning music, meditation, like how did you begin? that experience and um yeah i would love to okay. to ha hear that yeah. answer uh when we born to something it's better we have a mummy <laughs> then for sure my first advice try to find a good teacher nice very important. With or someone that the, the person feel uh, trust, and this could give another webcast how to identify the trustable teacher. Mm -hmm. If someone are seeing this and feel confidence and trust in in my sharing now worldwide. Uh, uh, allow us to connect it. You could find, you could search me, and <clears throat> I could uh, help anyone uh, that could search me through yoga, Ayurveda, meditation, whatever. Through, through uh, anything, uh, <clears throat> uh, it's very easy, and we could do it online sessions, and 
I could I could give directly that uh, uh, um, that help. Uh, if uh, someone feels this quite uh, impersonal or are uh, for many reasons don't feeling this empathy with my person or this resonance, then finding your street in your city or in a world wild other teachers that could help you to give these so important first steps. Because uh, if someone is born into something, it's better that they have a mummy. And in that sense, I see myself as a mummy. Mummy, it's not someone that puts someone in the world. It's, in this way, it's someone that takes care, that helps, that feeds, that have a nutritional, uh, in many ways, an educational capacity of uh, f feeding the basis of that being, that one day will be, will grow and will be a man or a woman, but inside of, of, of them, uh, like a, 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 a male or female cocoon, he, there are a being. That's why we are called human being, uh, human cocoon being. Then if we feed from child until the right moment, this feel of our humanity, our inner being will blow like flowers and fruits. And for sure, we need uh, an, uh, an, uh, a good agriculture mummy <laughs> to prepare the land and the field. Even the, those little steps, those little moments, because if you start in a good way, you will start in the best way. Uh, I work with adults and uh, I, I love it in many ways, but it's a, a challenge uh, in re-education mode because uh, they have to forget it or not forget it, to don't give value to that memories that are so important and become uh, the uh, the coins, the the value uh, of uh, their lives, and if we take value from that and put value on other things, then those memories will vanish or will just uh, uh, will just become to a state of. Uh, their own value that are not so important. Uh, and this is re-education. It's more a, pro a process of re-evaluation, not a, a process of forgetting. But forgetting in many things, it's not bad. It's, it's a blessing. Uh, but uh, in a mature and spiritual way, uh, it's also a blessing you don't forget nothing. If you could really don't forget nothing of this world and this life and other lives, but you have the capacity of managing the value of those ancient memories, even when you were not what you perceive as you, <laughs> uh, that could become quite enlightenment. <clears throat> That's uh, so well said, so well said. And um, I think we'll, we'll transition there unless there's anything else you uh, would like to share. Um, That's a tricky and dangerous question. I know, Just I know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, we, uh, we could go all day, but maybe we'll have a, a part two in the future. I, I love your answer to you know, for anyone looking to develop a practice right now to find a teacher of uh, something that it is you'd like to try out that's new. Um, Anything. And, if you and, want to learn to cook, uh, don't go make experience to your kitchen. Find a teacher. There are good teachers that have uh, record hmm. some cooking lessons. And then you, or you could go to a good teacher in a book. Yeah. But 
behind the book and the video or whatever, it's 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 a person, not an animal or a plant or a light being. It's a person. <laughs> Cannot, but many of them are dead. I have a lot of good teachers that they are dead. Yeah, and they too. they keep still inspiring me. I identify good teachings. Wow, I, I want to keep this energy. I want to hold, I want to feed myself with this energy. Wow. Uh, but but the, we, are, we are talking mainly of good reference, good teachers. Hmm. And, and that's a blessing yeah. for sure. Well, you have been such a wonderful teacher to me and a brother, so thank you. you for that. So next time, one of these days we put it on the contrary because you are quite unique too, Josh. <laughs> ah, well, thank you. Um, and uh, just to, to close out, we want to share with you a, a longer track um, and a video that we recorded uh, by a lake in northern Portugal about uh, two, two years ago. And it was on a very hot day very new in my experience as being a percussionist um, getting to play with you know amazing musicians uh, over the last few years so you know I carry so much gratitude for all of those times especially now that uh, we're not playing out in public so often so is there anything you'd like to introduce about the video uh, Bruno before I play <laughs> that video that for those that don't know, we uh, we went to to record many times our amazing jump sessions because uh, me and Josh we have a special connection uh, as beings, human beings, brothers, and uh, also in music. And many times we had moments and it, we reached that moment, oh, we should record this, why we not record? Other times we try to record, but because technical problems, battery, whatever, we could not record. Then this was our first uh, record in Alentejo, after we go flying in a balloon, it's very amazing, unique, uh, uh, experience and it was uh, in the in the most hot day in my life in Portugal four days in Uber and we went in the interior even more hot and then we were desesperated with water with something because we are sweating sweating and like we are being cooked alive what's happening and we find that uh, like uh, get lost in Alentejo. <clears throat> Many people think that we are naked. We are not naked. We could be naked. <laughs> That's the problem. But we are not naked. We are just uh, near the water, uh, like two brothers, two friends, just jamming, uh, just trusting, and 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 it was a beautiful sharing. Uh, and that's a beautiful way of uh, ending this uh, this moment. Thank you, by the heart. Nice. You Thank and all of all of you that are uh, wherever in the world sharing these moments with us. Thank you a lot for your precious time. For um, thank you and keep safe. Uh, not in your body or in your health. Take care of that dangerous things. Keep safe in your mind and perception. Open your eyes, also your heart. Trust in the universe. We will all die for sure. That's that's a, a happy thing. Uh, then don't feed the fear of death or or disease. Don't feed that. Just live each moment by the heart. By the heart, full power. Uh, uh, loving and supporting all of you. Don't buy this fear. Don't buy it. That's another talking. Keep safe in your conscience, in your inner happiness, uh, in your life uh, state, because very soon we will die. Okay? 
<laughs> like this interview. <laughs> okay. See thank you, you soon. brother. Thank you, brother. You. And thank you for uh, speaking in English today. I know that's not your first language, so much appreciate that. And Sorry if I reinvent it or create new words, but I'm an expert of them. <laughs> no, it's very good. It's very good. I, yes. I really appreciate that. We'll put uh, Portuguese titles on uh, the video for. Uh, obrigado do fundo do coração. Muito obrigado. Obrigado, meu amigo. Obrigado. And now enjoy Narasanga by the lake.
Well, thank you so much for joining us today and always joining us on the Embodied Sounds uh, web series. So grateful to have talked with Bruno Teixeira. And you can like uh, his page, Pash Baz, and reach out to him for any guidance on meditation, yoga, building of sadhana practice into your life. Uh, he's also very well connected with a doctor from India who specializes in Ayurveda. So please give him a buzz or leave a comment in the Embodied Sounds chat and I will connect you. And be sure to sign up for our channels. Stay in touch and stay safe during quarantine. Thank you and have a great rest of your afternoon.